All right, we are back in the black hole of real estate. And every year around this time, we start to have the conversations about the snowbirds coming back uh, to areas such as Florida. So we're going to take a little time to talk about what that looks like and what it means to the area uh, properties available and the market in general. This is your host, Ron Wojcikarski, for the Black Hole of Real Estate. And, you know, every year we have what's pumpkin spice lattes and they bring back certain types of foods and traditions. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas and whatever else you celebrate in the New Year's, what it brings in a lot of people that are looking to escape um, the colder weather in areas of the country such as the Northeast. And Florida is a popular destination for them to vacation. Um, the snowbirds, as they call them, sometimes they'll rent from January through April and then go back you know, in the spring. Uh, back home, take care of taxes and things and yards and plan their summers and events and family reunions up there. So... Uh, but in the meantime, Florida continues to be, you know, a very, very popular place for people to travel to, um, to relax, and, you know, thinking about would you rather be shoveling snow or walking around on the water, the beaches, or, you know, playing golf or tennis or you know, pickleballs, all the rage down here. Uh, so many things to do in um, a state such as Florida. And it's not limited just to this area, but what I would say is uh, if we were to take a peek at this market, it might uh, expand some truths and expose some, you know, of the inner workings of uh, what happens in coastal areas in warm weather. Um, now, the first thing, we, we think of, you know, what, what would a snowbird be looking at? Well, interestingly enough, not every property they buy has a bazillion dollar waterfront mansion. Now, there's a number of manufactured homes in parks where people purchase these, um, let's call them trailers for a minute, and they lease the land, and then they just pay the lot rent, and when they're there, they stay at it, and it's a, it's a summer um, time type of getaway for them uh, in the off months, and that's one way that people come to the area. Uh, there's also manufactured homes where they actually own the land, and then they could bring an RV or something, depending if there's an association um, to park it there, maybe a boat or a trailer. Um, so relatively inexpensive barrier to entry to get you know your things down here, get a foot in the ground. And for those that say, geez, I don't know if I want to have a trailer, uh, think about what it offers to people. It's less expensive. They can get things down here, get the lay of the land. They can bring a car down here or just leave it down here if they want to. Um, there's neighbors and people in the community keep an eye on things for you. Maybe someone that can you know take your car, start it up a little bit so the battery doesn't go dead. I mean, anything like that. Uh, but for many people, being able to come down and get the lay of the land and understand, you know, would I like to be at this beach or that beach? Is it close to shopping? Um, is there a hospital or, you know, nearby if you like that? And entertainment, whether it's restaurants or other things that they would like to do. It, it's a good way to introduce yourself to the area. Uh, rentals, big, big thing. Um, people renting for two, three, four months at a time. Sometimes it's just a week or so for a getaway. But being able to get established in an area and make some friends and decide, is this the type of property I'd like to move into? Would I like to purchase it? Is it something that I could use part-time and then rent it out the rest? You know, lots of opportunities. So, you know, the manufactured home, the mobile home, the trailer, while it doesn't sound like an obvious choice for many, it's a popular choice. Um, you know, condos, that's what a lot of people think of immediately when you mention a snowbird because you've got a limited amount of upkeep for it, you know, basically just what's inside. And you can, a lot of them are sold fully furnished, so you, other than bringing your clothes down, you know, pack a suitcase and you're in business. You are, you know, you're living, you know, near the beach or near a golf course or you know, tennis courts or the things that you might want to do, but there's a sense of community in some of the condos that is um, really popular. So that is absolutely a way for a snowbird to come down is, is to buy a condo, make it a second home, and call it a day. And with you know limited maintenance available, it, it's, it's relatively easy. Uh, so that is absolutely something that is taking place uh, year in, year out. I, I know that in our business, we do a lot of uh, condo business, and uh, it's pretty simple. It, it's, it's interesting that... While financing is available in, in many condos, uh, they tend to be cash purchases um, much of the time. There's also something called a condo tell. And if you're not familiar with this, think of a hotel room that you can purchase. 
Now, these are almost always cash purchases. It's rare that there's any financing available, and it's usually because what the lenders would call it is a non warrantable condo. Well, it's a really fancy word to say that there's so many rentals, the banks don't like to lend in there. They end up being cash purchases. If it's financed, a lot of times people will take a home equity line of credit against the property, their primary residence, for instance, and then they'll use that money um, and then pay cash for it. So that's probably the extra financing piece. But the condo tells, they typically have a rental desk. You could do the rentals as short as like a day or two, the overnight stays, weekend stays. So if you're using a few days a month, you can rent it out the rest. And for a lot of people, that's become a super popular decision. Again, low barrier to entry as far as price. It gives you amenities. It gives you sometimes restaurants on site, uh, walkability to the beach and other things. So the condo hotel, the condo hotel, another thing that snowbirds can look at. And then they can stay for the months that they want and rent it out when, when they're not using these properties. So now you've got a manufactured home. You've got condos. You've got condo hotels. Hey, let's not forget the bungalow beach house. You know, little two-bedroom properties, you know, really just in, in neighborhood streets, walkability to the intercoastal, walkability to the beach. But, you know, having a private garage for many people is super attractive. And I think as you um, begin to think about it, you know, if you're going to have a vehicle down there, would you like it inside or outside? Uh, having a garage, if you, I don't know, if you had a motorcycle or jet skis or something you want to keep in there or, you know, beach gear or surfboards, that, you know, that garage becomes extra storage, a little more important to some people as they uh, start to transition down here. So the I, I really like the, you know, the little bungalow beach houses. They're quirky, they're neat, they're, they're a little bit older, a uh, lot of fun, and but it's, it's a great place where you can customize and make it your own. And uh, we have a lot of clients really enjoying uh, the, the beach bungalow type of house. Now, we can also work our hip the ladder a little bit and start talking about waterfront properties. And we can get you know, into the millions as far as uh, executive-style homes on the beach as well. And you know that type of snowbird, um, I'm not sure they're buying those uh, for snowbird for just a couple months out of the year. But you know, there is enormous wealth in the world. And for someone, a million-dollar property is like double the max budget they would ever consider. And for other people that own multi-million-dollar homes, you know, a million on a beach property that they're going to gently use um, a few times a year is, isn't a financial concern to them. So what we run into is that there's a lot of, uh, what would you call it, flavors of snowbirds out there. And each one has its um, its own target market, its, its own type of property that they really want. Um, a sense of community for some, uh, resort-style living for others ease of transitioning into a, a tropical coastal area uh, with temperate climates it gets really for me it's fun to be able to talk about beach properties and the many iterations of what is available uh, but it starts with you know the desire to have a place in a coastal area on the water you know, beach properties and, and all the lifestyle things that go along with it that's that's what's really interesting uh, to me if you're looking for that beach property, that snowbird property, what would you look for in a rental? I would absolutely make sure if you've got pets that is pet friendly. I, I would start there for many people that have their, their cat or their lap dog and know that not all birds may be welcome in all places, especially the ones that make a lot of noise. Um, that, that's absolutely something to look at. If you're coming down with an RV with your vehicle attached to it, let's make sure there's enough parking for that. Are there any restrictions? If it is a 55 plus, are there restrictions for your kids or grandkids coming down? Uh, that may be something that you're not readily thinking about. What else would I look for in a snowbird type of place? Um, well, if, if, if it's a rental, can you re up? If you have a great time in January and you decide to stay in February, or is there a way to continue to stay there or do you have to move out? Does the property happen to be going on the market? It may require 24-hour notice and pay attention to this. If, if you're leasing something and they have it on the market for sale, your vacation potentially could get interrupted. So I'd want to have that agreement in place with the owner of the property, uh, what that looks like if they're going to try to show the property. If you're looking to purchase, I would absolutely look into a four-point inspection, uh, wind mitigation, age of the roof, super important uh, these days. 
Is the electrical panel super old or has it been modernized, um, upgraded? Uh, we've seen, you know, um, plumbing. Is it old cast plumbing? Uh, is, is the water pipe, is, is, is it connected to the street? Is it city water? Is it city sewer? Uh, is it uh, septic? That, I mean, that, that can happen in a lot of places on Beachside. I would want to examine a lot of these things if I'm a snowbird who's ready to purchase after many years of renting or one that just the thought of spending two, three, five thousand dollars a week on a rental or five or ten thousand for a month, that might be a daunting figure to <laughs> scratch into a checkbook. Um, may, maybe purchasing is the right thing, but uh, I'm throwing a lot out there about the snowbird season because to me it's an exciting time of year and a lot of people are coming to the area with hopes, dreams, and aspirations and vacations on their mind. Some will rent, some will purchase, um, but I believe that once people start doing it, they start to look at it as an annual tradition for themselves. Since that was a, just a little bit on my mind today, I want to take a peek at what does a snowbird season look like and what would it mean to you. And of course, I would love, love, love your comments. Definitely subscribe so that we can keep bringing you this content to help you with your real estate um, knowledge and keep you on top of what's going on in these markets. This is your host, Ron Wojcikarski for the Black Hole of Real Estate.